Hello friends, hello family, hello faith walkers. God bless you all on this glorious day. For this truly is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to another edition of Christianity with me, with your hostess Michi, where we sip tea and discuss the word of God. I am listening to Dappy T. Keys, Be Still, and you can find this on YouTube. I do not own the rights to this music, but again, it is beautiful music to meditate to, to calm down to, to sleep to, to rest to, to read your word to. Amen. So I am going to introduce my tea at this time. I have my iced tea today and my ice is quickly melting because <laughs> it's hot. The tea's hot. Today's hot. And so this is my Sarasop tea. And as usual, I do not drink it sweetened. I, I just like it unsweetened. But of course, I have sweeteners for those of you who want to move more to an organic sweetener. I have two types of sweeteners. I have a honey sweetener. A clovey, clover honey sweetener, and I have a an agave, a plant-based sweetener. This is agave. This is my clover honey, and you can find these sweeteners along with my soursop, organic soursop tea, on my Etsy page. You can Google God Sip Tea. Co. That's G O D S I P T E A C O. You put that in your Google search engine, and when you see Etsy, you click it. It will take you directly into my Etsy shop, where we you will see my organic Sarasop tea, my sweeteners, and other products that I sell. But now that we have discussed our tea, well, let me just tell you a little bit more about Sarasop before I move on. Sarasop is good. It can help to treat stomach ailments, fever, parasitic infections. It can assist with high blood pressure. It can also help um, with rheumatoid arthritis. And it can use some parts of it. Sarasop tree can be used as a sedative as well as it has been hailed recently for having cancer fighting properties so get your sarasop tea and when we use these teas on a regular basis like anything whether it's vitamins or whatever we have to use these things on a regular basis so that we can begin to see our bodies change and how our bodies react and how our the benefits affect our bodies. So we're talking about on a regular basis here. Let's move and let's try some sour soft tea. Mmm, it is good. It is delicious, you all. I love my sour soft tea. Well, now that we have discussed our tea and I have tasted my delicious tea today, I'm gonna turn off my music that I do not own the rights to, by the way. <laughs> and I am going to go ahead and get into the word that I have today. The word that I am going to deal with today is selfish. <laughs> Didn't expect that, did you? <laughs> I'm going to... Um, just deal with one word, selfish, because sometimes when I'm meditating um, and I think on life and think about the different um, people that have passed through my life, family members, friends, um, strangers, colleagues at work, church folk. So sometimes when I just meditate and, and just time with the Lord, I start thinking about different situations I've found myself in. And and so often that I can find where I have encountered selfish people, 
selfish people. Not to say at one time in my life I might not have been selfish, but I um, don't believe now that I am a selfish person for the most part. I tend to, you know, be a giver and to try to be more sensitive to others and their plight. But anyway, selfish is defined as lacking consideration for others, concerned chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. And so we can find this a lot of times in individuals. I have scores of examples where, you know, I've felt frustrated a lot of times because I dealt with people who were chiefly concerned about their own personal profit. Sometimes people are about being the one that gets the glory so, or being the one that um, is is not concerned about the big picture. Um, they want to be the ones that get the accolades. They don't have a group or a team concept, or they don't even have a, a concept of, oh, you know, I'm doing this to the glory of God. It's, it's about them, and it's about them getting the glory. And God doesn't share his glory with anybody. But I wrote something down that I want to share and then I and and I have scripture that I actually move into and this is what I wrote down um, a couple of months ago so I'm sharing it today when I was thinking on selfish people because a lot of times the Lord he'll give me things to write and so this is what I began to write and I'm sharing it with you today Selfish people live their lives as a victim and not as a victor. Life is all about them and not about those around them. They're always expecting people to give to them, to check on them, and to meet their needs. And never feel it's their turn to provide to others. Have you ever met anybody like that or? Have you ever found yourself being a person like that? We have to be honest now. They are like a one-way street that leads to their own home. Or like a stagnant stream that lets water and resources in, but never releases or pushes anything out. They take, 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 and rarely, if ever, give anything back and they tend to do this to individuals i mean they do it to their family members loved ones children they don't discriminate they they do this everywhere they go and it's usually the people around them that can tell you yeah this person is very selfish and a lot of times for whatever reason that individual is blind blinded um by selfishness always thinks it's about them and the needs that they need met and never realize that everybody needs needs met at some time or another. Selfishness, as I defined, is lack of consideration for others and concern chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure which is in direct contrast to God's word is in direct contrast to Jesus's example in the earth is in direct contrast to what the expectation is for us as Christians for us as believers for us as faith walkers selfishness is a sin and it is a sin because it causes people to operate and act contrary to God's word. These are the characteristics of a selfish person. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> That's who they're concerned with, people. 
It's always, always about them, their needs, their hurts, their downtroddenness. It's always about them. And we have to be careful of, of that mentality. We have to be careful of the me, myself, and I syndrome. Even as ministers and even in ministry, we have to be careful of that. We have to examine ourselves from time to time, even as ministers, to make sure that our ministry can mindset is to continue to help others that our ministry mindset doesn't shift from helping other people providing for others and shift to this help me help me help me help me grow my ministry help me um, to come out help me to flourish because a lot of times we can do that we can get so caught up even as ministers to trying to grow our ministries or our fan base. That's what I'm going to call it because a lot of times that's what people are doing now. Ministry in a lot of instances has become fan base related and that's what drives people into this me, myself, and I syndrome because they are trying to get fans. They're trying to get people to like them. They're trying to get followers but not followers of Jesus Christ, but a follower of them, you know, likes and shares and, oh, um, all of that kind of stuff. When it brings us, it can bring us off track um, with what the goal of church, the e ecclesia, what we are really supposed to be doing. We're really supposed to be pointing people to God. We're really supposed to be causing people to flourish but flourish in righteousness and truth we're really supposed to be helping people to come out but come out of sin and come out of darkness come out of the bondages that they are in not um come into my church come into where i am come into my meeting room no it's supposed to be about always always we're supposed to be pointing to God and all that we do, we're supposed to be pointing people to Jesus in everything we do. And Jesus said to the Pharisees, just to show that selfish spirit was in them. That's how the Pharisees and Sadducees had gotten off track. Everything was about them. They had stopped caring and loving and really ministering and being concerned for the people. And they had started being more concerned with their image, more concerned with being um, elevated and, and puffed up. And so Jesus said to the Pharisees, when they asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said to them that he, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And that the second commandment was like the first commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. And so selfishness is in direct contrast with the, the commandment to love your neighbor. Because if you're all about yourself, you're not going to give to your neighbor. You're not going to give to the homeless. You're not going to give to the sick. You're not going to give of your time. You're not going to give of your resources. You're not going to give of your energy or your strength. You will not give. And that is who we are supposed to give to. And right now, um, the Lord is even bringing to mind how... The scripture tells us we're not supposed to give to those who can give back to us. That's another thing that's running rampant in the body of Christ. People are ministering to one another. You're ministering to people who can give back to you. You're ministering to people who can bring bodies or people into your church or into your um, your chat room or into, um, into your meeting room. You are ministering to people like that when that is has never been what god has done that was never the example that jesus showed us jesus showed us that you go to those who cannot help you that cannot reciprocate that cannot give back to you necessarily those are the people that true ministers minister to 
You don't minister, you know, saying, oh, you give me three, I give you three. You give me five, I give you five. No, we're supposed to be giving of our time and resources and ministry gifts to those who have, who are downtrodden, those who are broken, those who at the time cannot give much, if anything, to us. And so that is how true ministry works. The Lord even said in the word of God that we are not supposed to give to those who can give back to us because then we're no better than the Pharisees when we do that. We're supposed to minister and give to those who and expect nothing back in return. And so for us to have the right heart, the right mindset, we have to do things the way Jesus did them. And we have to look at the examples that Jesus gave. And he gave us many examples. For instance, if you look at the Ten Commandments, let's look at God, God's example first. When we look at the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, you will see that the first four of the Ten Commandments are about loving God. And this is why the two categories were expressed when, when the Pharisees and Sadducees asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? He said, to love the Lord thy God with all your, your mind, your heart, your soul. And then the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, guess what? When you look at the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, the first four are about loving God and Him only, worshiping Him only. And then the, the, the last seven is about how you treat your fellow man, how to love your neighbor. And so it is so important for us to follow the examples of scripture, to follow the examples that the Lord has given us, even when it comes to Jesus and his lifestyle. He gave many examples through his living, how he gave over and over and over to the less fortunate. He would give, he fed the food to the, he fed the, 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 the ones who were hungry. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. And, and, and Jesus gave forgiveness to those who needed forgiving. He restored, he, he restored hope to those who didn't have hope. Those with low, low self-esteem, he built them up and he caused them to be restored. He restored people's self-worth. One of the purposes of forgiving the woman who was caught in adultery is her self-worth was in the toilet. She didn't feel loved. She didn't feel cared for. So she was over somewhere committing adultery because her self-worth was in the toilet. She didn't feel worthy. And so therefore here she is in the bed with another man. And so Jesus, he restored that to her. He forgave her and told her, go and don't sin anymore. Go, don't do that anymore. And so that's what Jesus did over and over again. He restored hope to the hopeless. He, he, gave, he forgave them and restored them. Also, um, we can see the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus and his lack of selfishness on the cross. When he died for us, here he was, had no sin. Yet he died for the sinful. That was the ultimate sacrifice where Jesus gave his life to show he was living his life, not selfishly, but selflessly. Less of himself, not more of himself. And John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. He gave his only begotten son. He gave the word to us. That whoever believes on Jesus in the word of God shall not perish but have eternal life. Acts 20 and 35 also says, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. This is what we're supposed to be doing, helping the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, 
It is more blessed to give than to receive. Jesus said that. When we live our lives and find ourselves dying like a stagnant stream, people come in, resources come in, but nothing ever grows or is sustained. It's time to examine our lives. It's time to see if the spirit of selfishness is living there. Ask yourself, who do I call on a regular basis? When is the last time I've given my resources to a friend or someone in need? To a friend or someone I do not know. I'm not even saying family members because sometimes we'll give to our children, sometimes. But some people selfish, they won't even do that. But I'm talking about to that friend, to that neighbor, to that stranger. Somebody who you know will not be able to give it back to you. When is the last time have you done that? Let's show the kind of love, the kind of life that Jesus showed us. Let's move out of selfishness and move into selflessness. Selflessness means less of self. Let's examine ourselves to see if selfishness lives here. And then let's move out of it. Let's get rid of it. Let's untangle ourselves. Let's untie ourselves. Let's trust in the Lord and do good. Let's lean not to our own understanding of Him. He will direct our path. And God has also promised to take care of us. So saints, friends, faith walkers, this has been another edition of Christianity with me with your hostess Michi. Let's show the right kind of love. The God kind of love. And let's be selfless, concerned less with self instead of selfish. God bless you all and have a great day. Bye-bye.